Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from Skill Builder, and this is Ask Skill Builder. It's a strand we have where you send in the questions and I try to answer them. I say I try to answer them. Actually, we've got good comments from our viewers down below, which are very, very useful indeed, because obviously I don't know it all and uh, I can only look at it and give my opinion. But having the opinion of others below, very, very useful. Sometimes they've got straight to the nub of the problem. So what we're gonna do in the future is we're gonna invite some of our regular viewers to join our panel. We're gonna hook up with them and we're gonna get an Ask Skill Builder team, which hopefully will cover different parts of the country and different trades. So hopefully with that bigger team, we'll be able to answer even more questions. Here's a question from Tom Barry. And Tom says he had British gas out to service his boiler. They were there for less than 15 minutes. And he said then the next day the pressure had dropped and he topped the pressure up and he found there was a small leak under the pump on the boiler. But also more concerning is that he found all this rubbish in the bottom of the heat exchanger. And he said, rightly or wrongly, I opened it up. Well, it's his boiler, it's his house, you know. You are actually allowed to do that, believe it or not, uh, under the law, if you want to do DIY with gas insulations if you're competent but not a great idea generally but anyway he opened it up and what he found in there was just a load of crud he said he found rocks in there well what that is is that's all coming off the condensate and it seems to be reacting with the aluminium heat exchanger in this case it does need a good old clean out like he's done. What I've found over the years, we've got what we now call a, a flue gas analyzer, which is a probe that they stick in the end of the flue or they can do it from inside. What they do is they come around, they just take a reading. And if it's within parameters, if it's the boiler is burning cleanly and these modern boilers tend to burn cleanly anyway then they leave it they don't even take the casing off and the reason they don't take the casing off is because they found that even just coming along to a boiler that was previously working well and they take the casing off they disturb something and then suddenly they open up a can of worms and they've got problems that they didn't previously have so over the years they've refined their operation to say if it ain't broke don't fix it so your annual service will consist of the guy having a quick visual inspection of your flu, making sure there are no disconnections there, no blockages, no bird's nests, anything like that. Sticking his flue gas analyzer in there, firing up the boiler, running it, and if it works, then that's all they're gonna do. They're gonna walk away and say, see you next year. So he says he's gonna call them back again, but he's thinking that he might knock them on the head and get a local guy in to service his boiler. Quite honestly, you know, I, I would not disagree with that. I was doing a building job. I was actually doing an underfloor heating system and I looked at the boiler. I could see just looking through the little eyeglass there that the burner was absolutely covered in carbon deposits and it looked horrible the way it was burning. It was burning with a yellow flame, which is not great, it should be blue. I said to the householder, that boiler needs a bit of attention. I wasn't gonna do it, but I said it needed doing. She said, oh, don't worry, British Gas are coming around the, uh, next week and they're gonna, they're gonna sort it out. They, they, they do their annual service. Well, the guy came round and he was there for, you know, 10 minutes or whatever he was, quick, Flue gas analyzer in, out, bish, bosh, bash, you know? And I looked in the eyeglass, I was back doing my underfloor heating, and I looked in the eyeglass, and there's a still, this burner was still covered in crud, you know, completely covered up with rubbish. And as there'd been a lot of building work going on in that house, if you're running the boiler, it's got an air inlet, and that air inlet is sucking in building dust. So if you're, you're running the boiler while the guys are doing the building, it's quite likely that your boiler has suffered from, you know, having a lot of dirt in it. So for no other reason than that, it could have done with a good old clean out and service. So I phoned British Gas up and I said to them, look, your guy's been in and he's done this boiler service. And quite honestly, I've said to the householder, I'm not happy with it. Uh, I think he needs to come around and clean the burner out and everything. They had somebody round within half an hour to do that. They, they absolutely jumped on it, you know. And uh, there was no argument. The, the new guy who came in, he said, oh yeah, it should have been done. Said the other guy it was in a bit of a rush, blah, 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 you know. And so some people just go around getting all their work done very, very quickly in the day. I'm not saying this is a British gas problem. It's just a problem with different people. You know, it's only as good as the guy who's coming around to do the job. And if you find that you're not getting good service from some you know, service contractor because they just keep sending different people in and they don't care, they just do the job then, I would tend to go for that little local guy. I like the little local guys. They tend to come out when you want them to come out. And if you've got an emergency, they're gonna come out and, and solve the problem. 
Uh, this one's from Jane, and Jane says that she's had an extension built, and it's all finished, but she said that even though they've got big bifold doors, she said the bit of the house which was previously had a window in it now hasn't because they've extended out and she said it's very dark in that room and they just can't get used to how dark it is she thought the bifold doors would put a bit more light in than they actually do and uh, she's almost regretting the fact that she's had the extension because she said this whole area in the middle of the house now is almost unusable it's just depressing to be in it this is an age-old problem jane i mean it is the, the thing you need to know about light or you don't need to know about light but i always think is interesting is that when you double the distance, you quarter the amount of light. It's what they call an inverse square. So if you think about a, a, a window and you think about moving six feet away from that window and the amount of light you've got there, if you move 12 feet away from that window, you've only got a quarter of the amount of light. So it, when you think about that in terms of when you're building an extension out, and you put a big bifold door there, you think, okay, I've doubled the window size here, but because you've moved away, you've actually quartered the amount of light. You've not just halved it. So it's not a question of just doubling up. You've got to put four times as much glass in that area as you had before. And even then, there is a tail off because you've got a very bright area at the front you've got a bigger contrast so your eyes are kind of every time you turn to the door your eyes are kind of getting used to a, a lot of bright light so that they're closing you know the the iris is closing if you like and so when you turn back into the bit of dark room your eyes have to adjust to the darkness if that makes sense so it's one of those things that you're almost better off having an even light which is all dark or a or all light than you are having this this big contrast you know because we're not good at coping with the contrast really you know we haven't got a high enough dynamic range in our eye eyesight to cope with it so what, what i'd say is you can get a sunlight if, if there's any way that you can fit we've got a video on the key light sunlight which is a brilliant idea which is just a tube which brings light into the building now they work amazingly well you'd be really really pleased and surprised at how well they do work other than that decorating can make a huge difference if you keep all the colors light even the floor covering i mean if you've got a dark floor covering it kills the light if you've got a light floor covering it bounces up the light bounces into the rest of the room you can even get believe it or not light reflective paint which has got some kind of little crystals in it which just sparkles very slightly so that when you put it on the wall it just bounces the light into the room a bit more now don't expect that to work wonders it's obviously not going to be as good as as daylight but it, everything that you can do helps a little bit to lift that light at that dark end of the room if you like so as I say it's a common problem a lot of people experience it they come up with roof windows they come up with sun tunnels and the worst comes to the worst you can come up with some artificial light something like some daylight quality LEDs which are they give you the color temperature that you would get from bright sunlight outside so it's not like the old-fashioned light where it was all a bit yellow you've got a nice bright white light in the room and if you put that behind a little bit of a glass panel or something it can look like a window and i know that's not an ideal solution but it's better than living your life in darkness so we got one here on facebook it's just a photograph actually that adrian sent in and it's just he just thought we'd be interested to see it and it's a gas pipe and it's nothing very alarming about the gas pipe when you look down there but let's follow the photograph up and then you see this slot that's cut in this shutter it's a bit of a strange arrangement the whole thing really but they've cut this slot so obviously when the shutter goes down it goes around the gas pipe now he said this is an installation that's been done by british gas but i would very much doubt if that installation involved them cutting that slot i think they would have put that pipe in there and they would have said to whoever owns the building look you've got to do something about this because we're just going to put the pipe in here and the guy's going oh, i know what i do i'll cut a slot in the shutter so that wouldn't be the kind of thing they do they would just put the pipe in and i will readily admit that a lot of the time when you get gas pipes put in by people they don't always look that pretty if they're running them along the outside of the building all they're interested in is getting from a to b as 
easily as they can okay they're fairly neat installations most of the time but when you've got them running along the outside of the building they can look a bit ugly but that's what you get and um, I guess with gas the, the major thing is safety so having a pipe outside the building rather than inside it if it has a leak it's not going to do so much harm so now we've got one from Wayne Forrest and he said that he's doing a lot of work and adding some en suites and so on so he's going to have three showers running and he's got a combi and he's wondering if he can run three showers off a combi so he doesn't like electric showers and I'll completely concur with that he's saying can I run those three showers off off one combi or do I need another combi do I need two combis well I wouldn't use two combis because the problem we're using two combis is again it's this thing with the flow rate and, and the water going through and having to be heated up by them but also it's a lot of overkill because combis in themselves are quite powerful you know they, they, they're actually they produce quite a lot of output the question we're asking is are those three showers going to be used at the same time if you would say yes if everyone's getting up at the same time in the morning and they're all jumping in the shower at the same time then i think the way around it the way i would do it and the way again i've done it at my daughter's house what it is is a thermal store now you get a thermal store you can actually get a small one it's not a big cylinder but what that does is it gives you a preheat on the water coming through the combis so if you put a thermal store in the initial bit of water that's coming out of the tap for about the first 10 minutes is going to be preheated and that does give the thermal store a chance to replenish itself in that time as well so that's quite useful you basically plumb the combi up as if it was a conventional boiler i.e with a motorized valve and a cylinder so that you put some water through into this little thermal store and then out of that you run you have a coil inside that and the water that's going into the combi runs through the thermal store first to to be heated up so it's got a heat exchange in it but anyway saves you having another combi doesn't take up so much room in fact those thermal stores you can put them in a very very small space if you've just got somewhere at the back of some kitchen units or even above the boiler you can you can put one of those in and this one uh this comes from a, a builder he doesn't want to give his name and he's having a bit of a go at me actually he's saying how come you're a tradesman and you're giving all these people diy advice and you're putting us out of work and blah 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 you know he's, he's, he's i've heard this before quite honestly i've been involved all my career in helping diyers um when i used to go and help people that have come unstuck on their plumbing job maybe five o'clock on a saturday afternoon they'd be phoning up you know when the merchants were closed and they got no water and they couldn't fix the problem you know they maybe started to install their own bathroom suite and come unstuck now you could go around there and say hard luck mate you know you shouldn't have done it you should have called a plumber in i'm going to punish you now by charging you a lot of money or you can take the opposite view that we all do a little bit of diy i mean i you know cut my own lawn do my own bit of gardening clean my own windows you know there's things that we do in life i even change my own light bulbs how about that don't call an electrician in to do that so you know there are varying degrees of diy and it's not going to go away and i think we can live happily side by side with diyers and there's no need to to ridicule them now i have known in the past some diyers who have done absolutely superb jobs one of them is a cameraman that we use, Juby. He can turn his hand to anything. Quite honestly, he's a cameraman. He's never been formally taught how to do anything, but you just show him how to do something, rendering, plastering, bricklaying, carpentry, whatever it is, he does it superbly because his attitude is, I'm gonna do this perfectly. So it doesn't necessarily matter whether you're being paid or whether you're not being paid or whether you're doing it as a hobby or whether you're doing it for a living. The important thing is if your attitude is right if you get the information and youtube's fantastic for that now you can get good information on youtube and you can look at it and you can tackle a job so long as your attitude is right you're not trying to cut corners and i would say to anybody if you're embarking on diy the one thing you mustn't do is give yourself a time limit you mustn't go into it thinking i'm going to do this room up we've got a weekend to do it now all those 
programs on the television like changing rooms and loads of other programs like that where they did these makeovers in no time or you know diy sos where they get a huge team of people in to do the job to get it turned around they build unrealistic expectations in people of what can be achieved in what time you've got to reckon that if you're embarking on a job like putting a new bathroom suite in you're not going to get it done in a weekend you're probably not going to do it in a month and so for some people that's unacceptable if you've got a room that's out of out of action for a, a, that kind of time you you probably don't want to do it especially if it's a kitchen or something like that but if you've got a project you're quite happy to spend the time doing it you're relaxed about it you don't try and rush it and there's no reason why you shouldn't make a superb job of it so i'm not going to buy it that uh, i'm some kind of traitor encouraging people to do their own job I don't encourage them, I just say if you're going to do it, if you want to do it, then we'll help you.